Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone here in PIC and those who are worshiping with us online. I would like to say thank you to Ella for singing that beautiful song that the Creator left His best so that we could enjoy His rest. What a blessing to know that the Creator of heaven and earth has left everything, has come down to us and lifted us up so that we could enjoy his rest. Amen? But before we start and go on into this sermon, let us say a little quick word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this blessing. Thank you for the gift of rest. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for guiding us throughout the week. We ask for your guidance in this sermon. We ask that you continue to move in our hearts and see a different picture of you. Help us to leave this place different and help us to be changed by your power, Lord, and by your word. We say these prayers, Father, with assurance that you hear and answer our prayers. And we say this in Jesus' name, amen. Let me ask this question. What is love and how is love shown in its most purest form? In an old town, there, there were these raiders who were going into the town, into towns to kill and take everyone hostage. As a certain son and his father heard of the news, they talked about what they could do to spare their town from being overtaken and exterminated. The son boldly mentioned to his father that he would stay back while the whole town flees to the mountain. As hard as the father thought of this decision, he agreed with the son to spare his life for the whole town to live. While the raiders came in and seen this young man, they asked him, where is everyone? But he kept his mouth shut and the raiders ended up torturing him while his family and the townsmen fled, escaping to the mountains. While the raiders tortured the young man, they thought that he was dead. A few days later, a miracle happened where the son, who they thought were, was dead, opened his eyes and remembered the plan of the father and the townsmen. He later joins them where he has, where he was exalted for his love and sacrifice. Today, we will briefly look at a few examples of love from God who is love and has shown his love through his only begotten son. The person who we all are familiar with, which is none other than Jesus Christ, the son, who exemplified that love with his own life. We have three themes or points and that is here, that is shown at the screen. On the screen here, it says, the Son, the Creator, the Son, the Savior, and the Son, the Intercessor. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, if you could turn your Bibles to chapter, 1 John chapter 1, or chapter 4, verse 8, it reads that what? That God is love. God had so much love that he had to express this love from the beginning in creation. And he filled the world with life. But God wasn't the only person who was there from the beginning. And that leads us to our first point. It is the Son, the Creator. In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Let us make man in our image. Let us look at the word us. What does it mean? This word us mean, and how is it used? It requires two or more persons. So let us look into two other passages in the Bible and combine them with the, 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 the text that we just read. And to let us understand, to help us understand this word us. And who is this second person other than God? 
in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. 1 John chapter 1, or John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Remember, when the word us is used, it requires what? Two or more persons. So with what we just read, who is this us? It is none other than the Son, Jesus. You see, my brothers and sisters here, Jesus, God's Son, was there from the beginning as well. He, Jesus, was also part of creating the world. He, Jesus, laid the foundation of the world from the beginning as well. It, it says that in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. He, Jesus, has that same love that it is stated in 1 John 4, 8. God is love and also Jesus is love. Jesus, the Son, has this love that is so grand that he could not retain it. He made the heavens and he made the earth and everything in it and our first parents. You see, my brothers, here today in, in PIC and worshiping online, Jesus' love for us remains the same from the beginning to now. We may feel like nothing. But just remember that the Son, Jesus, has made the heavens and the earth out of nothing. So if he could make the heaven and the earth out of nothing, imagine what he could make out of you and what he, he could make out of me. We may feel like nothing, but he could do something extravagant, something beautiful in our lives. Amen? Just keep that in mind. We may not feel loved, but just remember that Christ is love. And he magnified that with so much love that we can even put into words. Remember that the God we serve loves each and every one of us. Even if we feel small in this world, even if we don't feel like we, we're important, God sees us. God is looking down at us. God is next to us, and God will guide us. As he took the time to place the sun, the moon, and the stars in perfect alignment so that we won't burn or freeze, how much time does God take the time out of his work to spend time with us, to perfect us, and to the image that was once lost, to the image that he would want us to be again in our first parents when he first created them. God wants to recreate us as cre he created the world. So if you feel small, if you don't feel love, just remember that God, that Christ is love. And he will do anything that he wants, he can do to continue to work in our lives so that we can enjoy the blessings that he has for us. Amen? So take comfort, my brothers and sisters. Take comfort of this, this truth, this truth that is in the Bible, this truth that God wants us to place in our hearts and in our minds. So going on to our next theme, the Son, the Savior. As mentioned before, that Jesus, the Son's love, is so great for us that He not only created the heavens and earth, but He actually died for us. In John 3.16, this is a famous verse that is basically the most famous text in the Bible. It reads, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten son imagine that now his only begotten son that whoever believes in him so this whoever now is everyone that god has created everyone who is walking on earth atheists everyone christians buddhists 
Catholics, everyone, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Beautiful, that no one should ever perish, but have everlasting life. But the key is that whoever believes in him, whoever accepts him, this is how much God loves us, my brothers and sisters, that he gave his only begotten son. This giving of his son, Jesus, was love in its purest and most genuine form, but in action. I'll read that again. This giving of his son, Jesus, was love in its most purest and most genuine form, but in action. That answers the first question that I proposed in the beginning. What is love and how is it shown? God's love for sinners led him to give his all that he has for our salvation. God supplied what the law, when broken, required. It was and is the essence of love to sacrifice love or his self for others. This love that God and Jesus show to us is opposite of what the world teaches. The world teaches selfishness. But the Bible and God is selflessness. Amen? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, that Jesus came as a baby, born of a virgin. It says, she will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. And this word translated, or in deeper studies, it's, it's translated to he saves. Because he will save his people from their sins. In the amplified version of the Bible, it says that Jesus that Jesus' name is the Lord, the Lord is salvation. So why is Jesus qualified to be our salvation and saves us? Because what the law, when broken, required, Jesus became. What the law required when broken, Jesus became. When the law is broken now, my brothers and sisters, let us just keep this in mind. When the law is broken, there, is, there needs to be a shedding of blood from an unblemished animal, preferably an unblemished lamb, or if you were poor, a turtle dove. Jesus the Son became that for us with his obedient life and love for all, each and every one of us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, it says that he, Jesus, became sin for us. One of the reasons why Jesus can, be, can bring salvation to us is because he was and is the, the perfect sacrifice. He was the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. He was at all point tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus became a curse for us so that we could receive the blessings. He became sin for us and he took on the penalty of the law. He fulfilled what the law required in his death on the cross and his life. My brothers and sisters, when others tempted Jesus and said, Come down from the cross. Jesus stood up high on that cross with the human race on his mind. With you and I on his mind. He stood up firm. He stood up tall when he could have stepped down. But he had you and I on his mind. When we feel that we have sinned so bad, and God will not accept us. Remember what Jesus has done for us. All we have to do, my brothers and sisters, is come to Him. Come to the foot 
of Jesus. Jesus invites us to lay all of our burdens on him. He is willing to take away our sins. You know, many of us may invest a lot of time and money to suppress and to numb the guilt that we may have from all of our past sins. But Jesus is the only one who can relieve us of, from them. He, can, he is the only one who can bring relief from whatever we did in the past. Some of us here may be haunted by sins. Some of us here may be, have a lot of guilt for what we may have done to God or to our, to our fellow brethren. But let us just remember that Jesus has paid it all. Jesus has paid it all, my brothers and sisters. And because of that, we can come to Him. Come to Him free of charge, for He has paid it all. We have the assurance because of His sinless life. We are forgiven when we confess our sins to Him because He overcame the penalty of sin with His death on the cross. Isn't that a beautiful sight? And because of that, because of his perfect sacrifice, he, Jesus, is the son, the intercessor, which is our third point. With the thought in mind that Jesus was the perfect lamb of God who take away the sin and the penalty of the world. What do you think Jesus is doing right now? Do you think he's just floating around in heaven doing nothing? Or do you think he is doing a special work for you and I. What do you guys think? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 that he is our high priest who is in a sanctuary not made with hands and he entered the most holy place for us all. Like the earthly high priests who helped with the atonement of the process, the atonement process for a sinner who prayed on behalf of the sinner and came close to God's glory in the earthly sanctuary. Jesus now, being our high priest, made, makes atonement for us with his death on the cross and intercedes and prays on our behalf for any sins that we may commit here on earth. He not only prays for us, my brothers and sisters, but he bestows on us power to overcome sin and walk in victory because of his perfect and obedient life on earth. Look at that. He bestows upon us what? Power to what? Overcome sin and walk because of his obedient life on earth. He bestows this overcoming power that he received when he was on earth and on the cross. He wants to give it to us, but we just have to receive Him. Believe and receive Him because He doesn't want any of us to perish. He wants us to overcome sin. If you have any sins that you may be struggling, struggling with, Jesus wants to give us the power to overcome that. He wants us to walk in victory. My brothers and sisters, Jesus, the Son, is our high priest who can sympathize with all of our struggles. He hears our prayers. He sees the spiritual battles we're going through. And he himself is praying on our behalf so that we can overcome sin that may be holding us down and burdening us here in 2022. We can have confidence when we come to Him with a heart yearning for His help that He would deliver us from anything that may be too heavy on us. Whatever we may be struggling with, my brothers, give it to Jesus. You know, growing up in a, in a home, a dysfunctional home, my parents 
divorced when I was six years old, and I end up using vices at the age of 13 to 26. I end up doing drugs and alcohol, got into a lot of bad things, and I never thought that I could give it up. But on December 8, 2013, on a Sabbath, actually, on a Saturday, I asked God, Lord, I'm tired of being tired. I want to give you my all. I want to give this drug habits, this drinking habits, and the habits of the world to you. Take it. As I confessed my sins, and I was being prayed over with my brothers at my men's ministry, I felt the Holy Spirit come down in me, take away all that rubbish that I had in my heart, and He released me. And from December 8, 2013, I've been clean and sober by God's grace. My brothers and sisters here today, who are here in AUP, who are worshiping with us online, Jesus can do the same thing for you as he did for me. My brothers and sisters, this Jesus, the Son, left heaven's best so that we could experience rest. This Jesus stepped down from his royal throne to stand high on Calvary. He put down his royal scepter and picked up that old rugged cross. He took off his royal crown and put on a crown of thorns. He took off his robe of righteousness and put on an old filthy garment. The creator of heaven and earth did all this for you and I. He invites us, my brothers and sisters. He invites us to put on that robe of righteousness that he freely offers you and I. Is there anyone here today in PIC who feels the moving of the love of God and the love of Christ in your hearts? Who would want to receive Him, Jesus the Son, as your Lord and Savior? He is inviting you today. There is nothing in this world that can satisfy what Jesus has for you. Will you receive Him? Will you say, Lord, here I am. I want to start a new life in you. Recreate me into something. Although I feel, no feel like nothing, recreate me into something for your glory. I want to give all my sins to you. And please empower me to walk in victory. Is that you? Is God impressing upon your heart? Do you feel the presence? Do you feel the conviction, the impression of Jesus, the Son, calling you, inviting you? Have confidence in His name. If Jesus can carry the weight on His shoulders, He can carry you, my brothers and sisters. If this is you, I would like to invite that you raise up your hand or stand while we pray for God to continue to work and impress upon your heart. Amen? So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much, Father God, for your blessings. Thank you for the message that you have spoken. Thank you for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who came down as a babe, who humbled himself, the creator of the world, came down as a babe, humbled himself, took on the punishment on our behalf, became our Savior, and intercedes for us. Lord, we'd like to acknowledge each and every one of my brothers and sisters here and those who are worshiping online who have made the decision to accept you as, your, as their Lord and Savior. 
I know you see their hearts, Lord. Continue to be with them, empower them, and help them with everything that they're dealing with. Be with us as we end this Sabbath service, and may we all share the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We love you, Lord, and we say these prayers, Father, in and through your Son. In Jesus' name, and we say, Amen.